Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, what I'm going to do is, I've got uh, two frames. Uh, one's a disc frame, um, road bikes obviously, and one's just a normal rim brake frame. They're both carbon frames, carbon fork, carbon steerer, um, so full carbon frames. Um, so what I'll do is, while they're almost like bare frame, um, I'll show you in a sec, but I thought I'd go ahead and we weigh them just to see uh, what the difference is between a disc frame and a road frame obviously everyone's banging on about discs are always he discs, um, are heavier obviously um, but are the frames a lot heavier or is it just the components you're putting on the frames that make it heavier so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll have a look at the frames and uh, we'll uh, weigh them and see what the outcome is right so here we have the uh, rim brake frame um, as you can see it's a Vitus, um, Vitesse Evo frame they're both the same size frames as well so um, both exactly the same size of frame um, obviously they take different bottom brackets um, things like that but the bottom bracket isn't in this one so I haven't had a chance to fit it um, but the headset's in obviously the bearings in all I've done is just put a cable tie around there just stop the fork dropping out when I weigh it well, see, so you've got the um, headset in, like I said, and I've just left the uh, the top cap on there for the bearing, um, and obviously the uh, compression plugs in in them in both frames for the uh, the, the um, top cap. So that's fitted in both. But other than that, it's bare, no seat clamp. Um, so that's a quick look at the frame. This is a disc brake frame. Vitus again, obviously. This is a um, Venon, as you can see there. Um, I'll say it's got the same compression caps in there. I've just left that at the top um, piece on there and then put a cable tie on there to stop the fork falling out. And all I'll do is I'll put the bottom bracket in here, as you can see. Uh, press fit but what I'll do is um, I'll just deduct the weight of that off of the um, total should have done it beforehand but got carried away um, obviously there's no seat clamp on it like I said but other than that it's identical it's the same size as that same frame size um, obviously you can see disc frame a dismount and through axle tw uh, 12 mil through axles on it I've taken the through axles out obviously um, so what I'll go ahead and do, we'll just weigh them both and see what the outcome is, um, and see how far apart they are actually in uh, in grams. You know, you might be surprised, might not. So that's uh, one thousand five hundred ninety-five grams there, as you can see. And that's the Vitesse Evo frame. So we go ahead and we weigh the other one. Right here we are with the uh, the Venom frame, the disc frame. So we go ahead and we pick this one up. See what the difference is. So that's a thousand eight hundred and forty. Obviously, I've just got to deduct that, deduct off the bottom um, weight of the uh, the bottom bracket, obviously. It's in there, so I know that, so I'll just deduct that off. Right, so with the uh, bottom bracket uh, deducted off of that, that's uh, 1,750 for that frame, disc, and 1,595 for the uh, road uh, rim brake frame. So the difference between the two is 155 grams. So it's 155 grams heavier for the disc frame than it is for the uh, rim brake frame. Right, so we've got the uh, the rear axle from the disc bike. Obviously, it's through axle, um, twelve mil through axle. So that's seventy six grams for that. So you uh, put that up against the rear um, quick release skewer. 
So that's 57 grams say for that. So as you can see that's where you're already you're just gaining a slight bit of weight on each on each uh, component because you can get lighter quick release skewers and you probably get lighter through axles but they're always lighter than one another so you're just gaining a few grams say you know 20 grams here 20 grams there um, over you know by the time you got disc rotors on the calipers you mounted the calipers you got disc rotors on um, as well and then you've obviously got the hydraulic line um, running all the way through right up to the uh, levers so that's all slight bit of weight over um, conventional cable by the time you've got the fluid in it um, and things like that and obviously you know that's where the weight just creeps up ever so slightly each time you put something on like the levers your levers are going to be heavier I mean the bars aren't because the bars are just it doesn't matter if you've got what handlebars you've got or stem doesn't matter if it's disc or rim brake that's irrelevant but things like the, the levers are going to be um, heavier between obviously road levers doesn't matter if you've got um, DI2 or mechanical the levers if they're mechanical say um, hydraulic then they're going to be a lot heavier than if you just add um, DI2 levers but those rim brake the levers are going to be heavier on the disc for a start so obviously that's where the weight is just creeping up slightly and that's why always end up they can always you know nine times out of ten then this the disc bike could always end up heavier than the rim brake bike will just by adding you know grams here grams there so um, obviously you can still buy the lightest you could buy the lightest components if you fit it all with Dura Race. say for example um, brakes throughout levers um, calip you know calipers uh, discs everything but you fitted the uh, rim brake version with Dura Race throughout you know the rim brake version is still going to end up lighter than the disc brake version um, because obviously you've got the metal, you've got the weight of a the weight of a disc rotor on there, whereas you've got the right weight of a caliper with pads in it, but that still doesn't you know it's not it doesn't add up to the weight of a disc going round with a caliper, and you still need the pads. Um, so it just creeps up. But there's a quick you know a quick demonstration of the weight between the two, and with exactly the same frame size between them. Right, so uh, the frame was 155 grams difference in the weights between them. So there's two gels there, that's 140. So it's 15 grams more than two gels weigh. That's to give you an idea of the weight difference between the two frames. Right, so that was a uh, quick demonstration of the weight for you anyway. Um, was regards With regards to if um, road bikes with discs on are any better than road bikes with rim brakes then the jury is out on that especially for racing purposes um, I don't think there's any benefit in having discs on, on uh, if you're racing a bike I can't see the point in it myself but it's with you've got to move with the times um, everyone's pushing all the manufacturers are pushing rim, um, disc brake bikes now um, and if you look back in time, mountain bikes never used to have um, disc brakes on them, hydraulic disc brakes or anything, they were all rim brakes, and then they moved to disc brakes, but the advantage with discs on mountain bikes is you need them on mountain bikes because obviously you've got all the, the mud and everything, and with caliper brakes on mountain bikes you get all the mud built up around them, and rim brakes, as you know, in the wet and muddy conditions, um, just wear the rims out. And they don't stop very well so on, on mountain bikes and it's perfectly acceptable to have um, disc brakes but for a road bike just a pure road bike carbon road bike say um, and you're racing then it, it, I can't see the point in it myself because if you think say take an average ride for instance um, if you live in a you know not, not anywhere that's mountainous put it that way but just a normal you know normal road if you think how much in an hour's ride, how many minutes you're actually using the brakes for, 
you're probably talking probably in an hour's ride you probably actually break in for a, probably two minutes out of a whole hour I reckon something like that it could even be less than that so you're not actually hardly breaking it at all you know um, so the, it's irrelevant really and in the dry they won't stop um, disc brakes rim brakes are perfectly adequate in the dry you can only brake so hard anyway before you lock the wheels up on a bike or you go flying over the handlebars you can only physically brake so hard anyway um, you're just going to either skid or just go straight over the if you slam the front brake on you just go straight over the handlebars anyway so there's only so much force you can put through them the only advantage with discs on a road uh, in a road situation is if you was touring when you've got panniers and the bike's heavy and you was going down some long hills with rim brakes on a touring bike and with the extra load of the uh, luggage and everything you're carrying bike packing say um, or just touring um, the extra weight obviously puts a lot of extra strain on you know wear on your rims and the, and the brake blocks and they don't stop nowhere near as good especially in the wet if you was touring and you're going down a hill so with the extra load on then they won't stop as well so disc brakes on touring bikes um, for that purpose then they're brilliant for that because you've got the extra peace of mind you know that in the wet weather they're going to stop uh, a lot better than rim brakes are and obviously the feel is a lot better but for out and out racing purposes then you won't gain anything by having um, there's no way you'll gain anything by having uh, disc brakes on it no not no way so but like I say manufacturers pushing disc brakes all the time now so I expect in the end rim brakes would be a thing of the past um, and they'd be uh, pretty much obsolete I would have thought but which is a shame because you like to have the choice uh, between rim brakes and disc brakes I would always have rim brakes over disc for like racing purposes but um, like for touring or anything like that then obviously in wet weather riding they come in handy the discs because um, you're not relying on um, like say when you've got wet rims and it's in there and it's dirty the roads it acts like grinding the surface away basically on your rims um, anyone to know that has washed a bike after they've ridden in the wet and, it, and like basically you're just the, the rim the blocks are just acting like uh, a couple of uh, bits of sandpaper and just grinding the rims away basically and they don't stop quite as well in the wet obviously as disc brakes do so they're handy for that but like I say for out and out racing there's no point in them um, so but anyway I hope you found the video interesting remember to subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content till the next one ride safe and I'll see you then